so there you go if you look at the tail of the tape cutting the more experienced man Grundy with the perfect record same heights roughly same ages and that's Frank and I said everything to gain from this Bama 17 for these two young men Bama 17 right here at the Victoria Warehouse Arena in Manchester we are ready for three five minute rounds in the featherweight division introducing first fighting out of the blue corner a jiu-jitsu specialist he stands five feet seven inches tall and weighed in at 145.2 pounds a record of five wins three losses and zero draws with all wins by submission representing London's pride and Kaioken MMA Andover in Hampshire Mike keep cutting and his opponent fighting out of the red corner a wrestling specialist he stands five feet eight inches tall he weighed in a 145.8 pounds a record of one win zero losses and zero draws representing team Kyle Van in Wigan Mike Grundy when the action begins a referee in charge is Mark Woodard so Frank if we look at the fine detail on this one you've got a jiu-jitsu specialist against a wrestling specialist and if you were a general punter someone just rush watching this you say isn't that the same thing well yes and no they're both grappling arts but one is about taking a mistake that somebody else makes and trying to submit them which is jiu-jitsu and the other one is about control wrestling's whole scoring system its whole mindset is all about controlling somebody so usually in this battle like this the wrestler tends to win but only if he keeps his arms short and inside and doesn't look and keep his head down so he doesn't look, look to get caught in chokes and arm bars. Well, cutting started there with an attempted kick to the head that almost landed, but at the same weight, you can see the size difference between the two men here, and it's certainly in favor of Grundy, the wrestler. Much bigger, much broader, is a much wider back. And you can see right, right away he's looking for a nice body lock. He's a little bit high across the back, but as soon as he lets go, he immediately starts to exchange and, and look for another way to catch somebody. So he, and that time he let go and immediately went to the went to the body with the uh, with a knee. A lot of times he'll let go and come up top with his free hand and come over the top and hit you in the head with a punch. So Mike Cutting, as we said on paper, the more experienced man, five wins, three losses, all five wins as mentioned before, by submission. So when it goes to the ground, this will be really interesting on both perspectives, Frank. You know, that's the thing you know with wrestlers is that they always try to have control on the way down, like I said earlier. See, oh, nice double under twist. Good job getting on top. Now he's in half guard. So he's in control. But what can Cutting do with this now? He gets a lot of submissions from the bottom, but he's already been passed. He's already in a bad position. He's in a spot now that if, if Grunny can get an elbow free, he can start to elbow him in the face. There's no real spot. So the first thing that Cutting has to do is get himself back in the at least half guard, if not back in the full guard. Now the problem there, as we mentioned before, is the size and the strength, obviously, of his young opponent, who impressed us, as we said last time out at Bama. So it's one thing to say. It's another thing to do it when you've got a man like that on top of you there, Frank. Doing a great job, cutting did a great job of getting his legs in, putting himself in a good position. He's back to half guard, but he's also got his head caught. He's in a bit of a Dars choke right now. He's got his sunk in, being crossed that arm over. I don't know how deep it is on the back side because I can't see. But he has a leg caught, he has an arm caught, he's got him in pin. You're right, attack. you're right, Frank. Yep. You called it straight away. You, the moment it was in deep, I, I looked at you and you knew it was over. Yeah, there's no way around that. Once he gets his elbow across, once he gets his body in there, and he's so strong. And you can see as they're, as they're standing side by side how much broader Gundy is, and that's all back strength. So the moment he got that dart sunk in there and squeezed, there's no way to get out of it because now he's locked in, especially with your foot caught. And again, for this young man, that's 2-0 and at Bama, and he hasn't gone out in the first round. He's looked very calm and comfortable doing it, Frank. And he's in a weight class that we're looking for stars. 145-pound weight class, we're looking for stars of that weight class. And when you got a guy that comes in there, he strikes, he takes you down right away, he dispatches you in quick fashion, it's so easy to get behind him. And that, that leg kick, it did land, he walked right through it, it hit him right in the chin. I didn't think it hit him because the way he walked through it, he caught it right on his forehead and walked right through that, that leg kick. And we see here the twisting takedown, double unders, ends up takedown pass. When I try to teach anybody, coach anybody about wrestling for MMA, takedown pass. You can't be in the middle of something and try to pass later because you're not going to be able to do it. And because he took down a pass so easily, he ends up with that dart stroke just a, just a short minute later. So here we go now for the official result, but Grundy's 2-0 here at Bama. Ladies and gentlemen, this bout ended in 1 minute 56 seconds off the first round. Your winner by dart stroke in the red corner, Mike Grundy.